Hello there gorgeous gamers and welcome back to Pure Play TV for another video review and this time we've got Rise Race the Future which is available on PC and Nintendo Switch but in this video we're looking at the Nintendo Switch version specifically because of its most recent update version 1.06 which adds split screen multiplayer support. Not only that but the game has been updated quite a bit since its original release on Switch so this serves as both a review and a bit of a catch up if you've missed out on the game. Let's get on with it. My first time playing Rise Race the Future, I was annoyed, frustrated and honestly I was on the verge of putting the game off as a bad job. First impressions were not great. I did a little reading about the game while I waited for the download and I heard good things. Apparently the game was a mashup of Ridge Racer and other old school arcade games. And seeing as Ridge Racer has been left to die, I'm happy to try anything that bears even a passing resemblance. Just not Xenon Racer, that game is an actual turd. So my first race and I was optimistic. The graphics looked decent in handheld mode and the presentation in the menus inspired confidence that this wasn't just a budget release. Then I got to racing, crashed into a wall and turned the air blue. The controls are fine and the physics are sound enough but the game is not kind to any mistake you make. If you're an error prone racer you're gonna have to get good. One slip and you'll be smashing the side of the track while everyone else blasts past you. You can try to catch up but honestly you're better off just restarting the race and saving your time. It took me a little while to get a feel for the game's physics but once I did, it clicked. I was throwing my car's arse around big corners with ease but still with a little caution and I figured out that using the boost button, you gain boost either by driving fast or drifting, can be used for more than a kick of speed. Rise Race the Future's gimmick is that it takes place in a future where it's normal for wheels of racing cars to tuck underneath the body when driven over a body of water, a bit like a hovercraft. This is where the handling gets really tricky, with the controls fighting you all the way. Go too fast and you run the risk of hitting a turn the wrong way and losing yourself to last place, but with the right usage of the boost button you can turn even the dirtiest corner in your favour. It takes a bit of time but once you've mastered it you'll be doing it without a second thought. As far as comparisons go to Ridge Racer and other arcade racers, it's definitely more towards other arcade racers than the former. And while I'm a massive Ridge Racer fan and I would love nothing more than to see a decent knockoff, Rise Race the Future isn't the one. And that's because it's not trying to be a direct knockoff of anything. Instead, it borrows elements from the greats and comes up as a fairly good racing game with lengthy championships to complete as well as a ton of challenges to unlock new cars. One downside is that the tracks all kind of blur together after a while. The tracks are interesting enough and offer a decent variety of races. The locales are uninspired and there's plenty of reusing the same track but with different weather, mirrored or sectioned off to create a new track out of the original. Fair enough, squeeze what you can out of what you have but the lack of futuristic settings is a bit disappointing. I'd have loved to have seen a bit more inspiration from Ridge Racer in this department more than anything. There's no online multiplayer here which is a shame, but there is a brand new split screen mode which I'll get to in just a second. First a little bit about the technicals. Rise Race the Future has two performance profiles for you to choose from, depending on what matters most to you. The 60fps mode which bumps up the frame rate to a smoother and reasonably well hit 60fps, but this does affect the graphics. There's a lot more stair stepping on cars and a little less detail on the tracks. That being said, it's the mode I prefer because you just can't beat 60 FPS in a racing game. The other option is 30 FPS with better graphics. The graphical difference isn't too striking but the feel of the game definitely is. Going from 60 to 30 is jarring but I did eventually warm to it, though not entirely out of choice. These performance modes are only available in docked mode. If you want to play in handheld or tabletop mode, you'll be locked to 30 FPS no matter what. And to be honest, it's good enough for gaming on the go. Not that I've been going anywhere, but still, for a handheld game, I'm happy with 30. If you want to play split screen with another player, you can use one set of Joy-Con controllers for two players, a la Mario Kart. But here, you're stuck to 30 FPS mode, handheld and docked. Again, this is a compromise to keep play smooth while you punch and jab your other half for causing you to spin out. I don't punch and jab, but my other half does, and she's mean and I need to be saved. Help! Jokes aside, split screen mode isn't going to drastically change the game and I suspect most would prefer online play, but in a pinch, yeah why not? It's got to be better than playing the same races on Mario Kart 8 for the thousandth time. 
for the asking price, Rise Race the Future is a really good proposition. An arcade racer with great graphics, decent gameplay, local multiplayer, and some nice options for players who want them. And at a very fair price too. What more could you want? And that's the end of this video review, and I hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. If you did, do us a massive favour and hit the like and subscribe buttons down below, as well as the bell icon so that you're the first to know when we've got new stuff. I've been Chris, I'm actually from the future, and I'll see you there. Until then, bye bye.